This is Duke University. This comes from a series we did in 2003 in The Lancet on child mortality. Um, it basically says there are 10 million annual childhood deaths. Each of the red dots is 5,000 deaths, so you can see, well, where they, where they concentrate. So, um, obviously, this is a huge number of deaths, an unacceptable number. But in fact, actually, there is progress. We, we talk about the Millennium Development Goals, and this would be MTG4, reducing child mortality by two-thirds between 1990 and, and um, 2015. There's a very large slice of deaths occurring in the first month of life, the first 28 days. And this is the breakout of our, our current best estimates of the global deaths by cause. Uh, large fractions that are from infection, from asphyxiation at birth, and from preterm extreme prematurity. As the nutritional status worsens, and this is expressed as weight for age z-score, um, and this, so this would be mild, moderate, severe, undernutrition, if you will. Even here, at mild, you get about a two-fold increased risk of death from uh, diarrhea, pneumonia, malaria, and measles. And as you get um, further down that, that curve for uh, greater undernutrition, that risk goes up substantially. And in fact, here with severe undernutrition is, is very high relative risk of death. And we've said taken together these uh, undernutrition and suboptimal breastfeeding risk factors were responsible for 35% of child deaths and 11% of the global disease burden expressed as disability adjusted life years. And maybe more tangibly, this means 3.6 million mothers and children will die each year as a result of undernutrition. So we thought, all right, enough of this, you know, sort of individual slice of life focused um, uh, approach or, or sort of individual um, disease focused approach. We see a lot of now. Let's really think about what would make sense today in primary health care. First, just a simple schematic. And so what we're talking about here, which is really more primary health care, actually this will go one more. Um, this community level, which is community health workers, community support groups, then the first level health facility, which may have physicians or clinical officers, it may have nurses and midwives, uh, it may have outreach workers who go out and do antenatal care clinics or immunization programs. And then there's another level here, which is certainly indispensable, but often the accessibility is, uh, is not where it should be, or the social acceptability is not where it should be. So utilization of these um, referral hospitals is often problematic. And, and that's why, for many of us, focusing a lot on what can be done here is really important. If you don't have cesarean section available, which is not desirable, but it, it, it's the fact in many cases, you could still with the community-based interventions, probably avert about half of the maternal deaths. If you do have cesarean section available by these estimations, that will go up and may go up to averting two-thirds of the deaths, given the, the kind of services that might be available with cesarean section in these settings. So um, this has been looked at by some of the maternal health people. And most, for the most part, they said, yeah, that's probably true. Although, you know, we have really wanted to emphasize delivery in health facilities, hospitals, where a full range of services are available. And we're afraid to give this message because it might take the focus off of that. So it is a bit of a controversy, if you will. But I, I think where it has gotten pretty heated is in regard to the potential effects of community-based interventions on neonatal mortality, which are huge. This, this looks at some, some key interventions that would affect um, uh, particularly child mortality. And I guess what you can see here is that only up here with the immunizations have we gotten up to 80%, reaching 80% of the children who should be immunized. As you go down the list, it's pretty appalling. So. Shoot down to uh, 
care seeking for pneumonia, for example, early initiation of breastfeeding, antibiotics for pneumonia, less than a third of children receiving. At this time, uh, sleeping under insecticide uh, treated nets, very low. Um, and so, there's a long way to go to deliver these interventions to populations in need. What I'm basically trying to say is that we, we know there's a lot that can be done, and we know we're not doing it well. And now, in spite of the fact that there's quite a bit more funding for maternal and child health intervention programs in, um, in low-income countries, that money is still not being programmed very well. So this is sort of a, I don't know, epilogue. So we're involved now in, in prospective evaluation of the impact of, of maternal child health programs in a half dozen African countries. And so my bottom line is we, we, we have a lot we can do, and we need to do it in the context of focused primary health care programs really addressing maternal and child mortality. That's my bottom line. Thank you.